Right. Okay, if you could get at, get with that person, okay? Yeah, <laughs> I know. We're live, so we got to watch what we say. We had too good of a conversation on the pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, ladies. It's our Tuesday FICA broadcast. I'm your host, Carl, with me, the lovely host, Naki. Good evening, Naki. Hey. Y'all ready? You We're good? Ready. We're awesome. ready. We're ready. Why don't you uh, turn it over to our two guests that we have this evening. Well, we uh, today is a great day because we have two Bay Area beauties, activists, artists, amazing, amazing um, women that represent the Bay Area. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy. I just, everything I love about Mo and Jean is all wrapped up in their work. And so um, if you are from the Bay Area, which I know a lot of our, our, our listeners and watchers are, you, then you know of Mo and Jean and of their work, which is um, just, it's breathtaking. A lot of the stuff that you guys do visually and the fights that you guys put um, into everyday life of just being women of color. And so, um, we're, I'm going to ask you, Mo, first, if you can introduce yourself and, and tell us, um, the audience, a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, my name is Mo. I also go by Afatasi the Artist. Um, I am Afatasi. My father is a Black American. My mother is from Western Samoa. And a lot of my artistic practice um, is centered around being Afro-Polynesian. Actually, the my entire <laughs> arts practice right. is centered around being Afro-Polynesian, honoring that, what that means to me, and how that relates to the world and environment that I find myself in. Welcome. Awesome. And Jean? Um, Just a little know. intro. Um, so uh, my name is <laughs> Jean Belisengi. Uh, my parents... Uh, my mom's from Moa Samoa, and then my dad's from uh, Falele, Samoa, and uh, they migrated here separately and met at a cricket game in Frisco, and um, I was born on the east side of San Jose, though, um, but raised by a really good family, my, my auntie and my uncle, too, and, uh, and baby in Oakville, so shout out to my Tufuli family. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit about me, but I'm in, I'm in Oakland, so... I'm like all Bay Area. Um, so people are still living off that versus, um, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I'm yes. still there. I'm still there, Naki. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, that was so good. That was so good. And I, I said this on Sunday, that was the best one yet. Ever. Right, right. That was the best ever. one yet. So does anybody dare take a winner? Party. Anybody want to claim a winner? I, the Bay, I Area. The Bay Area. The Bay Area. Area. <laughs> exactly. That's what we it said was, on Sunday. It was so Bay Area. good. It was. That, that was my fa most favorite. And I know I'm biased because I'm from the Bay, but that was I'm the best. Seven. One. <laughs> that was the <laughs> best one. Just because, because we're biased doesn't mean we're wrong. That was right, the right. <laughs> they, talk, they, they shouted out everyone, you know, the East Coast, down South, exactly. you know. Exactly. So where other cool. artists are really competing against each other and yeah. talking about, I mean, I, it was just straight, just straight, like so funky, cool. Like, I know that sounds old, but it was <laughs> just so open and they, it was welcoming to whether you're from the Bay or not. And the people, what made it really good too, to me was everybody in the chat, everybody in the chat was like, no. it, was just, <laughs> it was just and crazy. That Naki, you're an OG too. You're an OG Frisco, so you know I, know. I know, I know, and I grew up, you know, and I hung out during Too Short, you know, when Too Short was out. Like I was telling, I remember coming home one night from a club in Oakland, and I told Nana, I said, Nana, they were they were shooting a Too Short video in the club that I was in, and then I was trying to not get on camera, but I mean. <laughs> You know, he did date a Samoan. I remember he dated a Samoan lady for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I mean, you know, like, and they know it's just yeah. 
I think that's that's the difference with the Bay Area. Like we have love for everyone. Yeah. And that you know, like I know down south there's Crips and Bloods, and they may have it here. I don't see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have the privilege of not seeing it, and I know you know I know it's I know it's around, but I just feel like the Bay Area, like we are all connected, like you say the Bay and everybody just has love, you know what I mean? And so when they did too short and E40, everybody, everybody was excited. It wasn't just E40 people. It wasn't too short. It was just, everybody came together that one night. <laughs> yeah. Who knew I we had moves? <laughs> yeah. I was like, E40 done lost weight and couldn't hold his liquor. <laughs> oh man. He was so good though. He was so good, so. Yeah, I, I love that. That was the best one yet. So pre-show, we were talking about how small the Pacific Islander community is because we were throwing names around going, oh, I didn't know you knew. And then she was saying, I didn't know you knew. Yeah. Um, and it's almost like uh, creative overload because Naki and I just got off the uh, Zoom call with D-Boy, Volum. Yeah. And hey. so one creator to come here to yeah. have two more artists that do their own creating. Naki and I are like, oh, maybe some will rub off on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't have an artistic bone in my body, but I have deep love for the art that our community puts out because it yeah. speaks volumes of where we grew up and, and a little bit of our culture and a little bit of where we grew up and a little bit of the neighborhood that we fight to live in every day and just to to just to fight to be our own people right like a lot of the time like you know we talk about this all the time my son can't just walk down the street and walk and not be harassed you know what I mean he's a man of color so there's a different way that I talk to my son than a person of you know that's not of color talks to his yeah. son so um we watched the uh, the artistic piece or the project that you guys both uh, worked on. Tell tell us a little bit about that. Um, so I wanted to start out by saying that like um, I'm I wanted to, like this kind of a disclaimer. Like I'm going to be doing a lot of the talking, and Jeannie and I spoke about this. It's mainly just because it's it's my project and my mm -hmm. concept, and I I had her come. Um, well, we met through the Bacchanal. DF Freak, Afro Urban Society. Um, shout out to NK. Shout out to everyone there. Um, and what is that? We so it was a fellowship that I was a part of, and oh. that is what I created this project for. So we were um, we we every so backtrack. Bacchanal DF Freak is a urban arts festival, and um, it features artists from the African diaspora from around the globe. So we had artists from Africa. France, we had artists from, yeah, for black artists from around the world. And so I was accepted into that fellowship and I created this work uh, and, and, and I wanted to like speak more about it. And uh, I, I had, well, I met Jean because um, NK, who is one of the, the people who runs the Bacchanal de Afrique Fellowship, mm -hmm. she was just kind of like, I think that I turned in a project, this is all this in full disclosure, like <laughs> um, I turned in a project and she was just kind of like, you know what, um, I feel like this, like your, because I, I created Afro Not Suit, she was like, I just feel like your project deserves like better photography. Like, do you know what I'm saying? It wasn't, it wasn't that it wasn't good enough. It was just that, um, you know, like better photography would have enhanced it. And so that's how she introduced me to Jean. And the level of photography, like Jean brought this project to a whole nother, another level just through her lens and her, her wonderful way of capturing things that I didn't even recognize. Just having a different perspective and a different artist there really made this project um, light years better, no pun intended, but light years better than, <laughs> than what it was. But yeah, so. <laughs> uh I don't know. Afrotasi's kind of being a little humble too, because like <laughs> I don't know. She's like, like I I I met her through NK, who's like a really dope artist and organizer out here in Oakland. She's Nigerian, um, and she lives in East Oakland. And uh, and she's like, hey, have you heard of this uh, 
Samoa, uh, Samoa girl from the baby. Her name's Afatasi. I was like, and I, you know, like, I don't know. I can count on my hands, like, how many artists I, I know, like, who are, like, really out there, um, who are not, like, music artists. Um, so, like, um, i never seen her before. Like, i never seen her work. And her work, I don't know. Did you all see her work, Naki and Carl? The one that you sent, she sent us. Yeah, we've seen her work. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she, like, has been, like, sewing some, like, wild, oh, yeah. crazy stuff. Like, she even made those helmets, and she engineered the lights inside of it. And, you know, she's from, like, Bayview, HP. And I was like, damn, where were you at when I was in high school? You know, because I was trying to do some artsy stuff. And that, you know, like, but she's just hella dope. And I, I feel like I, you know, I, I feel like if I met her young, when I was younger, like, we, we would have been, you know, now we're, now we're here. And I, <laughs> I, know. I know. There's going to be more to come. <laughs> There's going to be more to come. Yeah. I just. I can't say enough about the photography that Jean brought, like seriously. Yeah, you okay. created you created the the work. I mean the the that everything that you were wearing and the costumes, yeah. right? And that's just awesome. a disclaimer, that's my that's those are two are my sisters. <laughs> one, one of them looks like me, the other one, shout out to Ashley and Therese. Uh, I had them do it because like they would let me boss them around for a couple of days. So I was just like and <laughs> because I couldn't like, yeah, I, I it was great to shoot with them, and yeah. I feel like some points they also had fun too. I think I think too like the concept is like just like hella deep because like yeah. there's some stuff like I you know like I I was like uh, partly raised in Frisco and some of the stories like basically Afatasi's trying to weave in San Francisco stories of. Uh, the black community that was displaced, like, um, you know, before Samoans um, kind of came. Um, so, like, I think I think that, that the stories that she tells are important because I, I never, you know, I didn't know about Liz Dorf. I didn't even know that there was, like, a black, you know, I don't know if you want to give them more context, but I didn't know who Liz Dorf and Mary Ellen Pleasant was. So yeah. I, That's, I can't give more context. So it was about... Um, so like growing up in in San Francisco and being Afro Polynesian, like I'm I'm someone growing up that people don't necessarily look at me and think that I have an immigrant background, right? Like I do, and um, I remember a lot of times like hearing my you know Poly family like just you know with this mis misconception that you know black people were lazy and that they were just all on welfare and they were all like oh, if I can come out here, you know, they've been here this whole time and it's just this complete anti-Black misconception that um, Black people just have this inherent, you know, laziness about them. They just want everything for free, not recognizing the fact that there are multiple systems at play when it comes mm -hmm. to our economic opportunities. Um, and that all of the institutions we think about education, banking, housing, right. government, just, you know, just and the justice system, they are all actively working against us and conspiring. And we think of it in our day, especially like recently, we think of things like gentrification and how tech has come into San Francisco and really has been responsible amongst other factors, but, you know, raising the rents in San Francisco. So now like a one bedroom apartment is like $5,000. And um, they're, they're, we think of those types of injustices now because they're in our face. But what we fail to recognize is that San Francisco, a democratic city since the 1950s has been actively responsible for the displacement and the systematic degradation of its black residents. And I did research for this, per, like the hardest part about this, I wouldn't say the hardest part, but I felt like the part that I spent the most on, I mean, you'll see in the video, I, I created two space costumes. That wasn't even the hardest part for me. The hardest part was researching and finding these relevant stories where regarding San Francisco and black people and space right. and what that meant and how much space is allotted for black people and how much space has been completely taken away and spaces where there are still traces of us. 
uh, uh, someone from you know, outside of the Bay Area will come into San Francisco and think there are no black people here. That's purposeful. You think of all of the construction projects, all of the infrastructure that has been, um, you know, has been created. And it, 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 San Francisco has been, you know, under this beautification project, but beautification for whom? Because I remember like we weren't even allowed on the Naval Shipyard because of the toxicity levels. Right. You know, environmental racism. These are all things that I was just interested in trying to figure out a narrative to bring it all together and have these Afronauts just take these photos in spaces where the city minimizes us in spaces where they were, you know, they were completely annihilated and in spaces where there are traces of us still there. So do you think um, that San Francisco being one of the most liberal, if not the most liberal uh, city in the United States, do you think that um, the degradation is through complicit uh, inaction or do you think it's intentional? Oh, it's absolutely, like I, in the research that I found, it's absolutely intentional. I absolutely found narratives and stories of, and I'm just, I'm just gonna speak about one incident in particular, and I'm talking about what, I don't know if you guys know about um, Black Wall, Tulsa, Oklahoma and Black Wall Street, um, what happened in the 1920s there and how black people had created a space of economic growth. They had banks, they had libraries, they had movie theaters, they had systems of education that worked for their black, their, their black people. And it was literally called the Black Wall Street. They had banks, they had everything. Um, poor, the poor whites in the surrounding neighborhoods were literally jealous and they conspired together and literally just started, it was a massacre. They just started shooting the black residents, killing them, burning down their businesses, burning down and ran them out of there. People were, and they never were able to recover that. And so that what happened in Tulsa in the 1920s absolutely happened in San Francisco in the 1950s, uh, all the way, and, and it's still continuing now. So what happened was the, um, after the war, because a lot of pe black people came to the Bay Area because it was wartime, they were able to get jobs in the naval shipyards, right. which is why the Bayview Hunter Point has a lot of black residents. And um, after the war, there were all these black people, but no jobs because there's no more war. So we don't, we don't need all this labor. And so what happened was President Truman at the same time, he passed this this urban housing, the, the 1949 urban housing um, was, it was enacted by President Truman. And he literally allowed cities to completely decimate places that were considered slums. And what were considered slums? Places where black people lived, you know why? Because no one would rent to black people. So you had black people living in the Fillmore in the Western edition. And that's why it's called the Harlem of the, the West because Black people came here. They were only able to rent rooms they, and they end up living in these Victorians where they were renting the rooms and then through economic, their own economic um, up, like success, they own nightclubs, they own bars, they own restaurants, they own cafes, they own bookstores in the Fillmore, in the Fillmore. Wow. And so black blues and jazz singers started coming and performing in these, in these clubs. And these were the biggest acts of the time. You have Billie Holiday walking around on Fillmore Street. That's awesome. You have Ella Fitzgerald and all these jazz greats just chilling in the Fillmore because they were safe there and there was economic opportunity there for black people. So what did the city and county of San Francisco do? Again, jealous of the economic su success because they were buying with, within each other. If I need to go to the grocery store, I can go to the black grocery store right here yeah. in my neighborhood. The city conspired with, with uh, the policing, with, with the fire department, uh, they, they would come in and say, oh, this house is up to code, not up to code. We're going to, we're going to destroy it. So they did, they literally did that. They didn't give black people enough time to move out. They didn't give black people enough time to find uh, adequate housing. So a lot of them found themselves homeless. That was the invention of the section eight voucher. So they would say, okay, we'll give you this section eight voucher and whoever accepts it, you know, the government will pay for your housing because we're essentially destroying your entire block. So systematically block by block, the Western edition, which was all, which had bars and restaurants, 
they destroyed all that simply because Black people had made economic opportunities for themselves when the whole city would not allow them to only live in certain, would only allow them to live in certain places. So literally I read narrative after narrative of business owner after business owner just completely you know, the sheriff's department would come and lock up their business. And then here comes the bulldozer right after it. This happened to us. It was the worst, the worst urban planning disaster in the history of the United States happened right here in San Francisco. And it happened to our black residents. And we have never recovered from that. Oh, so this is just one of many stories that I see where our city wants to sit here and act and people come here and they talk to me like, oh, well, at least, at least you live in San Francisco. At least you're not somewhere in the South. There's no difference. And, and as a matter of fact, I like my racism right in my face and not subtle behind my back where you're taking away my housing behind my back while telling me this is a liberal and progressive city. And whites in this city, even to this day, believe they are superior to the whites of the South. They think that's because San Francisco never had a whites only fountain and a blacks only fountain and a whites only bathroom and a, San Francisco never had that, but it didn't need to have that to, to continue the same economic oppression that happens in the South. And so my job as an artist is to engage with, with the audience to, to show them a way that which this happened to us, this happened to us and it's continuing to happen to us. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that. And, and a way that I can do it is through, is through clothing, is through right. textile and fashion and photography. I think you bring up a good point about- um, the Well, that was a ramp. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was beautiful. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people don't know about uh, Black Wall Street. A lot of people didn't know why that was a big deal of why Trump picked that day um, for his event. You know what I mean? Like, I think there's, that people, when they heard that, they're like, well, wh wh why is it a big deal that you picked this day specifically? Um, but I think that you bring up a good point about um, the feelings of racism in California that, oh, it's yes. not the South. So, you know, there's not equal uh, levels of racism, but you're right, there's subtlety. And then there's actually, you know, let's hang it on the wall and say, you know, here it is. A example would be the way internment of the Japanese during World War II. California exactly. was horrible, was the, one of the worst states with that. Absolutely. You would think liberal in the West, um, you know, it was one of the worst states with internment. But yeah. um, you, you bring up an unspoken point. Is there, um, what do you see, is there things in your art that, um, that you have that you feel are reflective of the path out or the path to, the path up, I guess, upward? Um, I think for Black Space, it was just about telling forgotten stories or purposely forgotten stories and histories. Um, I don't, I honestly, as of right now, don't know of a way forward and a way out. It's, it's like just something that, you know, you think about constantly, especially when you're an artist and you are someone who is trying to find funding for your projects, you know? And so I think some of the, I, I wanted to stick for, for right now to the, to the forgotten untold stories of San Francisco and not necessarily find a way out. Gotcha. Uh, <clears throat> Makes sense. There's a lot of, there's stories to be told and uh, got to tell them in, in the way that your heart tells you to tell them. Yeah. Um, Jean, is there, um, can you tell us about that picture? I meant to ask you that it kind of, <laughs> And one of the, the the first things in the show, and I haven't asked it yet. So before I forget, can you tell us about the the picture that we see? Um, Carl, can um, I can't see the screen? Are, are you guys screen screen sharing? Yeah, no, it's the the picture that you have on your screen instead of your. Oh, picture. on my. On my. Uh, yeah. On my, Oh, okay. Um, that's actually my niece. Uh, I took that picture so on her last day uh, living in the Bay Area. So, uh, so it's so, a beautiful uh, picture, though. I'm actually gonna gonna turn my picture on since I just got home um, and got to my computer. So, so oh, I'll awesome. see you guys. So I'll see you guys oh, real quick. Be nice to see Jean. <laughs> 
<laughs> my bad, y'all. I'm, I've been on the move, so. Yeah, you're crazy busy. So, um, Mo, tell us about the studio. Um, you've been in there for a minute now. How's it treating you? Oh, it's great. I like doing things like this. Nice. Is that your work? Yeah. I, oh, wow. I, yeah, it's my it's one of my my works that um, I'm working on. It's um it's called the Afro Block Party, and it's just artwork based off of Afros oh. and Afro love. I so this piece is called the Aphrodisiac. So I, I kind of fashioned it like a um, you know, like a 1960s girl group. <laughs> you know, like an album cover. Yeah. And so the, this one is called, like these are all things, the aphrodisiacs are things that enhance your Afro, like a smile, like hoops, like baby her and a swoop. Oh, right. <laughs> and our hair grows towards the sun. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you'll see, you'll be seeing more of, more of them later because I have a whole like series. But it's been going great. Uh, Matt, you're a big Hoops fan. Oh, <laughs> I'm a big, big Earrings fan. fan. Yes, they're so great. I love it. I I also need an afro. I just need some kind of hair. I'll need some kind of hair thing from you. <laughs> uh, uh, rap, I, I, I got you for sure. Oh, yay. I definitely got you. I like so I'm, much fabric. I have a hard time finding scarves, so I don't. I would like to cover my head, but I, I've found I have two scarves, and I can't really find any that I like. Oh, okay. Well, I definitely have a lot of fabric here that can awesome. just get turned into a scarf. Awesome. Very awesome. easy. Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> the least I could do. <laughs> hey, so Nike, do you, do you see me trying to um, trying to go on? Oh wait, I... is that sorry? Is it... Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh. Did she leave? There. Oh, there you go. Hey, y'all. Yay. <laughs> My sister said hi. So I'm also oh, tell your sister I said hi. <laughs> Wait, where's your studio at, um, Tassie? Oh, in the, in the uh, Hunter's, in the Naval Shipyards. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hey, Naki, have you ever known a um, Samoan artist in, in the shipyard, in the artist ship, naval shipyard? No, I have. This is the first one. No. <laughs> it's crazy because I've been around there for hell long, right? Right. Forever. Forever. Well, you know me. I just, I work, I be, I work and I'm just like a, a ostrich in the sand. You know, like I'm always. You know, I just like working, like it's always like tunnel vision, I feel. Yeah. Like, and people feel like I'm like ignoring them or like, but it's like, it's not that at all. I really have to dedicate a lot of my time to like the projects I'm working on. Yeah. And I feel like, like that's my process of it. Like just having to have this space to like do it. Cause right. I, I, I'm like doing stuff like this and like, I'm not even a painter. I actually hate it. Like, I don't like getting paint on my hands or anything. I'm like the neatest painter. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Wait, you painted that um, by hand on back of you? Yeah. Dang. That's nice, right? Nice. I like that. It's, it's not finished. It's supposed to have some line work done, but I'll, I'll get to it when I'm... When I'm uh, feel like hey, it. <laughs> hey, Naki, uh, Carl, have, have y'all been to New Zealand before? No, we were trying to go this year, but the pandemic happened. Oh, shoot. No, because it's a trip. Because, like, you know, like, growing up in the Bay, you don't get to see a lot of Poly Polynesian artists, like visual artists or photographers. Your daughter's one. She's like, shout out to Nana. Uh, no, but when I, I went to uh, New Zealand for this artist residency, I, you know, they're they have like studios they have a performing art school you know and like really like art really shifts Polynesian, you know could shift culture it could shift the way kids see their stories you know it could you know people are really talking to the el their elders you know because they want to you know create something and it's a trip because you know I, I feel like especially baby like there should be more programs for arts for, for young kids yeah because like my mom was not finna like 
spend her bingo money on some art supplies. Let's be honest. Like, right. <laughs> if I was like, mom, could you buy, could you give me some, let's be honest. Like that $25 bingo packet, like <laughs> she's not spending $25 on like an easel and some paint. She's, she's not doing it. <laughs> she was like, you ain't no artist. <laughs> I mean, like, shoot, I went to like, you know, like I went to uh, like a play, a church play. Mm -hmm. and I seen like the best performance of a church play and I forgot who it was it was this homegirl named Tofi I don't know if you guys named Tofi uh -huh. um, but she's a hella good actress at a church play oh. and like you know like our people are hella like we're artists yeah, like oh we're God. like you know orators so like I mean, so, look, like, at mom, look at our moms. They're very dramatic. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our, my mother is very dramatic too, but um, we're so talented. And you know, this is going to sound awful, but do you know where a lot of our artists, actors and singers and comedians on TikTok? <laughs> Have you guys been on TikTok? No. There are tons of Samoan and Tongans. Oh. Our people are on there acting and singing and doing comedy skits. See? And I was like, and they're just doing it just to do it. Yeah. But there's like on my page, if, if you, um, depending on what you watch, like I have a lot of uh, African-American because that's what I watch. And I watch a lot of PI. So that's what they throw on my, they call it for you page but we are so freaking talented and they're just playing around. They're just playing around just to, you know, it's a silly app, but I've watched so many singers on there and someone's, and this guy is teaching people how to speak someone, but there's artists on there. They're, we are so freaking talented and we're just, and on that app, they're just doing it just to mess around. But I was like, if they put just a little bit of effort <laughs> of into it. it they would be so successful in in what they're goofing around doing on this app I can't tell you how many different like when we were in Samoa uh, American Samoa last year we were at a church and this girl gets up there and starts singing and we were just like whoa right. like should be you know auditioning in front of Simon Cut like that was blown away and then you know that was it she just wanted you know she was just singing it on That's Sunday down. and then out playing right you know just no um and just the, the talents there and I've been at, at a bunch of different Samoan funerals where you know a little girl a, little, a boy gets up there and sings and you're like dang like a powerful voice. And then, you know, it's just because they were supposed to sing that day that they got up there and then they go do their thing. But there's so much talent out there in um, in our people that doesn't, I don't know, it, sometimes it doesn't translate. But to your point, Gene, the, to see that in, in New Zealand is that's a Polynesian country in Polynesia with Polynesians doing things that, you know, for the most part, like we get a doctor or a scientist or somebody on FICA, we're like, you know, that's amazing. Yeah. We were in uh, Upolu, we're in Apia, and we were eating breakfast. And um, who, who, we just ended up interviewing a doctor from New Zealand uh, because she knew Doris. And yeah. we we're having uh, breakfast with Doris. And this lady doctor from New Zealand walks in and, you know, nobody does. She's a doctor from New Zealand. There's plenty of, plenty of Polynesians doing those kind of things in in New Zealand so yeah we can't wait to get there we were supposed to get there but then COVID showed up so 2021 hopefully no it's a trip like I was like damn you guys are hella spoiled out here when I went out there because like you know like it was like there's like a Tongan sculpture artist out there I forgot his name but like you know we're just walking on a building and they're like oh that's that one guy he designed he did the architecture for this museum I was like what you know, like, he's just like, you know, you meet him and he looks like your dad, you know? Like, and like, even on the buses, like the bus stops, like it's all ingrained. Like you can see, like they, they got, they commissioned artists. And I always think about like the Bayview and like all these places where Hella Sam was living, you know, like, um, I remember they had like some like photo project where it was like, I am Bayview, but I was like trying, you know, you try to look for yourself and in, in, in stuff, you know, like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, like, you know, like, I was like, we're all the Samoan families, you know, like, nobody, had, you know, nobody asked the Samoans, like, to be, you know, because they're all over here, you know, like, 
nobody got like old school levies like their family in here or you know <laughs> but like you know to to what you all are doing like and off Tassi, like you know it is like the way that we gotta you know we gotta keep showing people that we we exist in, in, exactly. in places. Yeah, I totally, I totally believe that. that. Yeah. And before I even met you, both of you, you know, I heard of you before I met you, you know what I mean? Like, I've heard of Mo and her art and her work and her clothing, and I follow her on Instagram. And so I know of her stuff. But Mo is opening doors, you know, for young kids or anybody really to see you doing the work and to see your face and for them to say, you know, man, I could do that. If Mo can do it, I can do it. I know I can do it. And Jean, you know, people, when Mena, my daughter first started getting into film and, and talk, everybody was like, you got to meet Jean, you got to meet Jean, you know? And so I was like, who is Jean? Who is Jean? And that's all everybody talked about. But so to hear both of your names being used to talk to kids that are are trying to find their way. It's so, it's mind blowing, you know, that we even have these examples, like me growing up, I didn't, there was nobody for me. I, I didn't know that we were professors. I didn't know that we were doctors. I didn't, you know, and I think the generation now is so lucky to have all these windows and, and to see you two through these windows is, is amazing. And, and you guys are so awesome. So I'm so grateful to have you in this space so that people can see this is what we look like. This is what we look like. And so I, I thank you both for everything, the work that you do. And, and the, 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 when you go out to protest, when you go to fight for us, like that's huge too. You know, the kids, Jean was there or Mo was there. So, and what, and then it's, why? Why were they there? Then you have this whole open discussion of why we need to be in these spaces to fight for not only our black brothers and sisters, but for us, because we are people of color. Like whatever, but Carl talks about this too, that whatever affects the black community, we're right behind them because I mean, people see my, the color of my skin, they just see a person of color. Well, that's you know, right, that's the, people, it's the paper bag test, right? From the right. 50s, paper darker than a paper bag. But, yeah. you know, it's it, to that point, like all people of color are on the shoulders of black people as they move forward. So the right. um, the civil rights movement, like all people of color move forward because of that, not just the blacks. Right. So well, our, exactly like Carl, like our our like black liberation is directly linked to your liberation absolutely. and absolutely. and even the liberation of poor white people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's something that people need to understand. Like once the lower rung of the ladder, ladder is liberated, then the rest, you know, the, the, the wheel, the cycle breaks. Right. And, and I feel like, again, like my job as an artist is to reject reality as it is. Like I, I reject this reality. Like I don't believe that working a nine to five Monday through Friday is a normal thing. I don't, it's not normal. I don't believe that people are meant to work at a job for 30 years and then get the last 15 years of their life to enjoy themselves on retirement. That's right. not a normal life. And this system in America has you thinking that. And that's why I push so hard, like being an artist now is really because I'm making up for a lot of the time that I spent subscribing to this idea of, of working for somebody and getting an education for some relative safety that I'm not safe. Like I'm not safe in this country. Safety is an illusion. Right. And my parents taught me to, you know, go to school, get an education, get, get a good job and then work at that job. And I subscribed to that for so long. I was denying myself the, my artistic, you know, expression. I was denying myself that. And now I'm, you know, trying to make up for all that because I completely am like, this is, this is not normal. This does not speak to me. And this is not what I want to do with my life, period. And I'm not going to do it with my life because I only have one. And I really feel that, again, there are, even, even when it comes to our, you know, Polynesian people, we teach our kids it's the same way like same way that I was taught we teach our kids 
to do the right things, but it's more about relative safety, like getting money in a safe place. You know what I'm saying? Like this is your, for your safety, you must be educated for your safety. You must be, I mean, we're not saying this, but that's essentially what you're saying to your kids. Right. Artists being an artist and, ha and, and, and pursuing creative expressions are not something our people are getting money off of. And that's just period. So that's not a safe route. So we have to go like we, you know, we have to do art on the side or whenever we can. And so, the, yeah, there are hella like hella talented Pacific Islander, you know, artists and creative peoples, but because they have to work a nine to five, we we don't see them and we don't see their stories because they have because life happens. This reality happens, which completely diminishes, and now we don't see their contributions and their stories and what they have to offer. That's that's right. a big piece of like you think about society overall. If everybody were, or even not everybody, but say ninety percent of people were pursuing their passion and doing what they actually love, if they're happier, society would be a better place. Absolutely, you wouldn't have frustrated. Uh, depressed, um, you know, addicted to prescription, you, all those kind of things happen because you're not probably embracing your passion. You're like you said, you're working a nine to five when you'd rather be doing something else. Like, and if people like I see that, I'm like, look, if you if the nine to five is your passion and that's what you want to do, yeah, I want you to do that because I want more happy people in society. Society is going to be better if more people are happy, right. and that's going to come from people like you two that are saying, I'm gonna go pursue my passion and I'm gonna live and put my energy towards what I love versus I'm gonna conform and just, you know, work 35, 35 years, get a watch and yeah. retire and have 15 years. So, and that's kind of what, what Naki and I have talked about, like, what, what, what is it that we want? Well, we don't, all we wanna do is show people like you doing what you're doing so people can see like your passion matters. Like it matters to you, to your, I mean, so many different things, your health, your blood pressure, all those kind of things are relative to what are you doing? And are you, are you in conflict with yourself? Cause if you don't, if you hate your job, that's unhealthy. That, like that's going to give you some bad disease. If you hate your job every day, you go to work. But I, I will also say, yeah, there, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a nine to five. Like that's really just what you want to do. Right. I'm not knocking people who, who do that because that is what you want to do with your life. Right. Um, but what I'm saying is that even in the pursuit of artist, artistic endeavors and artistic in the pursuit of your artistic practice, um, the, this society makes it hard, harder for people of color to do that. That's why, you know, uh, Jean talked about, you know, the I am Bayview, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I actually know the photographer who shot, shot that because he ha just so happened to be one of the parents at the school that I worked for. Oh, nice. And so I know him and I was just kind of like, oh, cause I saw the, you know, I saw the posters on drive by and, you know, and I was just kind of like, oh, okay. They're doing this I am Bayview campaign, but they certainly could have reached out to baby photographers or Jean or so, some, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what's happening in the baby now is that like a lot of, I feel projects that, you know, could go to artists of color. They don't, a lot of grants don't go to artists of color. And so it, this society does make there, while there are avenues and lanes for you to get paid while do, you're doing this, it, it really, again, is rife with racism and, not as many opportunities. I mean, there are now more opportunities because they're being purposeful about that. Right. However, I, I, I still have my art in galleries where I'm definitely like always the only black one. I'm definitely always the only Polynesian one. And I'm most definitely always the Afro-Polynesian one. So it's, it's just for me a situation where I'm like, ah, I'm gonna make sure that all my art is centered around Afro-Polynesia. So they know we were here. Like, yep, this is the this is the first time a Siapa was in a in this gallery. This is the first time, you know, like the word Ufa was on a, you know what I'm saying? Was on uh, was on a piece of art and put up on the wall. Like I want you to know that. No, this is this is the language that I I I heard growing up. 
Yeah. These are the these are the phrases, you know what I'm saying? And so they definitely make it hard. They they that's why so many people and that's why our parents tell us to pursue safe, safer routes. Because right. I feel like when we do try like a lot of the avenues are just not for us in the arts. But we have to create our we own. We have to avenue. create them and we have to that's keep going. And that's what I'm doing, trying to do. That's what you're both doing. You're both doing that. You're creating your own avenues. We. I just want to shout out some people that are, are, are watching live on Facebook. We have Fia Esther. Uh, uh, Sala is saying, hey, family. Hey. Epi Almavaya. Hey, family. Hey. Uh, Trisha Pu'u. And um, let's see here. Joseph Tamuaku, hey, uh, Cree, and then Afro Urban Society is watching. Thank you for joining. Hey, what's up, <laughs> um, Leene Levi Siale, yeah. hey, everybody, Zulu Setu, and uh, yes, Afro Urban Society. We have amazing, talented artists and skilled people of color in the Bay, and we deserve to see ourselves and be recognized. We celebrate us. Yes, that's true. That's so true. <laughs> now, is the Black Voices going to be um, put out anywhere? Are you um, sharing it on social media yet? Or uh, the film? Yes. For, for, I don't even know what it's called. Is it a film? Jane, would you consider this a film? I think we should do a, like, I, I, I took video and this was super last. I think uh, it was really good. I think we should add some video to it to make. Okay. With a. Well. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Well, I'm going to be sharing the photos on my Instagram and stuff. Okay. Um, the, so, um, I mean, I'm just so blown away with like, sometimes I just like look at the photos and I think they're so cool, but I don't know what to consider black space. Cause it's kind of like a photo. It, they're all just photos. It's like a slideshow, yeah. but I put together some like audio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your audio is dope. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, so I put together some audio and that was the first time I had ever done that. And so it was nice to, to, to kind of learn that skill set and, and do it and figure it out in like a night. And so I just really um, don't know. I always put like photography series, but I really am interested in expanding the black space series. Um, I, was, I was telling Jean that um, I applied for a residency, an artist residency in Maui. Oh wow! At, uh, yeah, at a national, it's that it's at Haleakala. It's a national park, and it's at, at it's at a dormant volcano. Like majority of the park is this dormant volcano, so oh, it has wow. like these lunar landscapes and stuff. That I think making another spacesuit and putting people in them would look perfect there. Mm. Um, and Afro so Urban Society said it's a multimedia project. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, it is. Okay, it is a multimedia, multimedia project. project. It's a society. There you go. Thank you so much. Because I seen it and it's like pictures, but voices, you're, you're, um, uh, what are you, you're talking over it or speaking over it. And then yeah. I was like, it's not pictures, but it's kind of a, film kind of I like that I yeah. couldn't put my finger on it like I watched it and I was yeah. like is is it I'm not sure you know but I like that yeah. it wasn't that's perfect multimedia project yes thank you thank, thank you so, thank so you much. much yeah Afro that's awesome society. having my back yet again <laughs> so are you going to ex you're thinking of expanding this yes okay um so I'm going to to I just want to take black space to just different faces and different stories of just just of black people triumph black people stories that have been forgotten just like around the globe like stories and just kind of like create different afro not suits and um just expand it so it'll be like black space universe awesome and just for expansion and just to uh do it like that in different countries um different places and I think that, um, yeah, I think that I, I like it. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. And Jean, are you still, you're home now, going to school online? I, I just, I just uh, finished the, I have one more semester left 
but I'm taking a break next semester. Um, and I am working, I have some secret projects I've been working on. Oh, Not on social media, guys. I, I try, I, I, I need to focus. Um, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm writing a couple of scripts. Um, nice. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I might try to talk to you guys to see if you two want to do something real quick. <laughs> you know, we want the scoop. Yeah. <laughs> you want the scoop. But yeah, that's awesome. I'm so grateful for the, the space that you guys have allowed us to join and to have you join our space. And, you know, I am the biggest fan of the both of you. And also because I'm proud that you represent uh, soul and peace and just fight. All of that all in one, if it can be possible, but it's just fighting for us to be seen is fucking amazing. <laughs> it's just, it's badass that you two continue to do this and you continue to inspire and you continue to just do the work that makes all of us so proud, no matter how small, how big, you know, and just everything in your life. And I remember going to your barbecue, Jean, when you were <laughs> leaving for school and Aww. so many people, and it's such, it was such an eclectic group of people. You know what I mean? It just was, it was so many people from different, uh, I don't know, spans of life. Like, you know, it just wasn't set on a tunnel of, oh, all Jean's friends are all like yeah. Jean. It was just a a group of artistic people coming together. And so I, I loved seeing that your window is wide and open and that you're not tunnel vision like a lot of people are, you know, and you know, Mo, your art always continues to inspire me and I love your clothes. So <laughs> I just, I, I'm blessed to have been able in this lifetime to meet two amazing Gosh. people, so. It's, I'm grateful and blessed to have you both here. Thank you. Of course. I oh. love seeing the uh, the fire come out when we started talking about uh, San Francisco. And I asked, is it yeah. is it complicit in action or is it intentional? I loved seeing, like Naki said, the, the fight. I would love seeing that fire and that passion it's come so, out. It makes me angry. Like it really <laughs> makes, it, I'm, I'm angry it, that right? it's still, yeah, I, I get very passionate and I just try to, you know, I've been doing a lot of really educating myself into like the feelings that I feel around when I research things and find out like, wait, what? Like, wait, that happened? Wait, that we never recovered from this? That just, it makes me so angry. And I, I read a, a study by, done by Citibank that if America allowed Blacks the same opportunities as whites in regards to business and you know like just what if there there were no racism in certain institutions it include especially banking and housing america would be 16 trillion dollars richer and so when you think about racism it's just not a good ec business practice it's not a good economic practice and since america is such a capital capitalistic society it's just not a good business you know like it's not good business to be racist. And I think people are now seeing that. And I feel like a lot of the, to be honest, I feel like the, a lot of the Black Lives Matter things have been commodified just because people are not interested in losing business. They're not interested in helping Black lives. They're interested in not losing business. And I think that's also very shameful. So I'm just very interested in things that I'm just kind of like, just, you just scratch the surface and the racism still lies therein. You yeah. know, it's, it's still there, it's still happening, you know, and we have to continue to fight and we have to still continue to, to show, like, and that's what I meant to do is I really trying to show ways that San Francisco has been racist towards its black residents. This is not a new thing for us. This is not new. But the one thing that is new is that I built helmets. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I, this is my first time building a space helmet. And see, do, do, do. That'll um, look that is beautiful. That's some wear and tear. That's, a new, one. That's uh, a new one. No, it's not. This is the one that Trees wore. Oh, snap. 
Um, and then I, I built it so that it lights up. That's awesome. Oh, good. Lava beds. And yeah, lava. and it's like, ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, look at you. I know, that's what I'm saying. We have engineers. We have ghetto engineers, you know? And, <laughs> and, and yeah, so this is my, uh, my one of the space helmets that was in black space. That's and I, awesome. I can see it has um, a lot of Polynesian motif. I love it. Yeah. It's beautiful. I, I thought it was hilarious. I, I was I was trying not to cut my finger off. <laughs> <laughs> cut my fingers off. Workers comp thing. Yeah, <laughs> workers right. comp for myself. <laughs> That's so awesome. So dope. Every Epi said so dope. I know I can't stop saying that. They they were making fun of me in New Zealand. They're like, um, I think Drew, Drew and Loss were with me. And yeah. and two of our friends are like, um, because you know, like when you go to New Zealand, you'll try to emulate the accent. Oh and yeah. Like, hello, how are you? You know, and I was, you know, I have a habit of like emulating accents when I'm out there. <laughs> They try to do that. They're like, "Oh, so we're not American like you." Like saying, "Oh, you're so, you're so dope." I was like, <laughs> and "Drew was like, that's how Gene talks." <laughs> <laughs> I love New Zealand. I I went there. Um, I can't wait to go. I can't wait for y'all to go. Y'all need to go because I feel like y'all you guys are doing some next level stuff. That if you guys go out there, I bet you like. There's a bootleg Carl and Naki out there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What you guys are doing. <laughs> we're going yeah. we to go see Lisa Tauma. We were going to go, you know, we, we had places to see and people to talk to. And then dumb COVID came and showed up. And hopefully that's not uh, all of 2021. Yeah. But, uh, I, I yeah. think we've done, as a people, we've done really well with uh, this, like still connecting. Still, still following our passion. You're still doing your art. You're still doing film, going to school. We're still promoting positive PI. Like we've, our people found a way to, to, to make it through. Yeah. And I'm glad that uh, the both of you are, the people ask us like, how, how do you guys, hey, we just got to find people and get them on the show and talk. Like that's, that's a, having people like you out there makes our job easy. <laughs> so we enjoy, we, we love the time. Um, thank you so much for sharing with us. Any shout outs you want to get out to, uh, to anybody before we go, get your social media out there. Um, shout out to Afro Tainted. Um, shout out to NK, Afro Urban Society. Uh, I'm shouting out everybody that was on, on, this, on the chat. Um, oh. Shout out to, to Juju Schuster. <laughs> That's what you guys got to get on here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did interview him in January. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I gotta yeah. go. Oh, that was this year. That's so yes. crazy. Yes. That seems like two years ago. Mm. Uh, yes. Suafele says uh, big ups to you guys definitely definitely good people to look up to awesome thank you so our um, mo do you have any shout outs before oh, we we go um, yeah like same as Jean. shout out afro urban <laughs> society bacchanal de afrique fellowship all of the fellows mm -hmm. um shout out to uh just everybody who you know showed up and supported this chat uh shout out to Jean for creating this photography shout out to you guys hey. shout out to my sisters Teresa and Ashley for letting me boss them around for a few days <laughs> <laughs> they were wearing these ridiculous funny looking costumes and yeah thank you both so much for joining us we look forward to hearing about that script Jean yes and then we lo also look forward to more wonderful amazing stuff from you Mo thank you both right. for joining us today and we will see you soon. And then when you guys have your next projects, come back, come yes. back. So thank you so much. We love you. Thank you. Bye.